Hey everyone, I just wanted to pop in here and kind of go over the backside alignment with the brown dwarf system. If you remember, we've been talking about for a while how the backside alignment with the brown dwarf system was in January, kind of goes into February, but the, the um, direct backside alignment is about mid-January. So what's happening now is we're starting to see the earthquake activity fit that data. And remember, for a year in advance, we were talking about 2019's front side alignment being in July, you know, mid to end of July into, or uh, mid to end of June into July, and um, that there would be a big uptick in earthquakes and activity of all kinds because of this alignment. And sure enough, that's when we saw the all that activity on the West Coast, California, and then we've seen Canada, you know, all over there was a bunch of activity in July of 2019. So we were right, the data fit that. Data doesn't lie, the data fit that. So now we have been saying since that moment, okay, watch January, you know, we'll start nearing it in December, and you'll see this, this stuff start to pick up, which we, we've been watching Canada be hit, you know, the six points and all that as we near this backside alignment and come into this backside alignment. And then we go into January. So January is the backside alignment, and this will last into February, but the direct alignment, so the direct backside alignment is about mid-January. Now, Mike from around the world, who we watch and follow very closely, I followed him since 2014, and that's how I kind of started studying way back then all the data graphs so I could kind of watch what he was saying and see when it was coming in and then that got me started on that but anyways he talks about the pulses for January being stronger and so we're waiting on those and I think it's about mid-January when they're supposed to hit or when they start to hit so it could be any day now any time now he for a bit there was saying around January 13th was a big time for that um, pulse to hit so we're watching all of January. I'll be able to watch all the data, and when I see the pulses hit, I'll be able to bring that to y'all and let you know. Now, if I don't make a video, because we have a lot going on right now, um, I post it on the community part under my on my uh, YouTube channel. There's a community tab or a community part, so I'll make posts there, and then I make posts over on Patreon, and then I always post on Facebook. So if you're following me on Facebook, you'll see that there, too. But, um... Okay, so that's the information for the backside alignment. We are in the backside alignment. We are seeing the earthquakes or the earthquake activity uptick, the uptick in the earthquake activity. And um, this, this will continue. And then we have the pulses coming in, so that will kind of make everything else crazy. Now, the backside alignment is when the system is to the opposite of the sun, but it's still in alignment. It's, it still impacts us but it's opposite of the sun. Now remember, it's way to the south under the ecliptic, ecliptic sorry. <coughs> I have not felt well, but um, okay, so we, let me look here, I'm looking through my notes. We are, okay, we're on the backside alignment, now we're going to the earthquake data. Puerto Rico, okay, so on December 31st, I went ahead and put out another, you know, a Puerto Rico earthquake watch because they had a lot of swarming going on. And, you know, I was talking to my husband, telling him it's only a matter of time before they have a really big one. And this is pretty big for that area. So a 5.8 was pretty big for that area. It, was one, it wasn't the strongest, but it was one of the strongest quakes to hit in that part. So now we had a 5 point, or a 6.5, excuse me, 6.5 and another 6 point that they downgraded plus multiple, multiple others, and, you know, four points, three points, all kinds of five points swarming and hitting. This is crazy. I mean, the damage is really bad, so keep them in your thoughts. And then I quickly want to touch on something else over at Space Weather. So on Space Weather, um... What they're talking about over there is something Mike has also warned us about. This is something, if you've watched him, he has talked about, watch for this start to happen. Um, this says, yesterday, yesterday, on January 6th, something unexpected happened in the soil of northern Norway. 
electrical currents started flowing. Okay, so it's they're monitoring ground currents at the I can't even polar light center. They're okay. So this chart recording shows the sudden surge and it seemed to be some kind of shock wave, they say. My instruments detected a sudden strong variation in both ground currents and our local magnetic field. It really was a surprise. So that right there is something we're supposed to watch for also. That, you know, is something to keep in mind going forward and to watch for more reports of that. Okay, so last but not least, um, I took some photos this weekend of Beetlejuice because we have been talking about, you know, over on Facebook at least and on Patreon. I haven't been on here as much. I'm going to try to start getting on here a little bit more. Uh, when I get the means to be able to, but, um, pretty much Beetlejuice, you've probably all heard about it by now, uh, is in the news a lot right now because of the dimming and supernova that they think might happen. You know, you never know. You can't tell. But anyways, I have a Celestron Next Star 8SC telescope, and then I have a Nikon D5300 camera, and so I photographed that quickly just to, you know, keep an eye on. So those are the pictures you're seeing right there. And the Orion Nebula, that's pretty cool. So, um, if you haven't heard about that, uh, Betelgeuse is one of the brightest stars in the sky, and it's been dimming. And Betelgeuse is a reddish star that's one of the brightest in the night sky, and it has been noticeable, noticeably fainting or getting dimmer. Betelgeuse, which is a part of the Orion constellation, has been one of the most recognizable stars in the sky because of its brightness and correlation or coloration, sorry. But this recent dramatic fading has prompted scientists to suggest that the star might be entering a pre-supernova phase, dimming before it collapses and dies in a fiery supernova explosion. If the star does become a supernova, Betelgeuse would likely be as bright as or even brighter than the moon for weeks or even more. It would be the closest supernova supernova as observed and recorded by humans. This also means that if we see Betelgeuse explode tonight, the supernova really took place over 600 years ago. We're only seeing it now. Okay, so I just wanted to quickly bring that news to you, and I haven't been able to do an update video in a long time, so on, you know, news news, and, you know, what's going on, and the pulses, and all that. So I need to do this more. I'm, like I said, I'm trying to get the means to be able to do this more. We're in the process of uh, building our home, and we've got the septic tank in, and the light pole's getting put up soon. So when that's all done, I'll be able to do more videos, and I'm going to make this more regular or a more regular thing. And I've also not been doing so many videos because I keep getting tongue-tied constantly. I don't know what's up with that. But um, anyways, that's that. And if you are following all the Iran stuff, you might go over to my Facebook page and follow me over there because I usually report on things two to three hours before the news does with the Iran stuff. Um, there's so much going on, I don't really make videos over it because it's just constant stuff. But every strike that's happened or any of the stuff that's happened, or even with the Kenya base, I talked about it 10, you know, around 10 o'clock the night before. They said it happened that in the pre-dawn hours and really early, but it actually happened the night before. Um, and I had reported on that. So if you follow me over on Facebook, you can watch for reports on the Iran situation or the escalations and, you know, tensions building and all that. But, okay, so that's about it for right now. All right, thank you all. You all have a great day.